Let's make a case for Danilo Cavalcante's release, discuss the alien corpses shown in Mexico, and mourn a big loss in the fast food community. Welcome to episode 20 of Alternative Jargon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Alternative Jargon, episode number 20. Good to be back. Back regularly scheduled on Friday. Last week, I was a day late. I know the world sort of went into shock over that. Um, Thousands upon thousands of DMs demanding to know where the episode was at. Um, This week, I am currently battling some serious health issues. I have developed a little bit of an itchy patch on both my right and left arms. Um, And I am battling through this tough situation to bring you guys a new episode, no matter what. Had to go out, buy some anti-itch cream. Um, So the GoFundMe has not been set up yet, but, you know, hopefully I get my flowers someday for just battling through and continuing to stay consistent with this through the toughest times that life can throw at you. So we got a lot of things to cover today. A lot of things to cover today. Uh, Breaking news. Danilo Cavalcante, the escaped, the convicted murderer in the state of Pennsylvania, where I am located, has been captured. Now, Danilo Cavalcante, this guy has the name of a UFC uh, lightweight champion, the face of a SoundCloud rapper, and the elusiveness of Osama bin Laden. Frankly, I am kind of impressed by this guy. He spider crawled his way up a wall to escape a prison, and he managed to evade cops for two weeks right in the Philadelphia suburbs. It's not like this guy was out in the middle of the woods. He was in heavily populated areas. Now, they did find him in the woods, uh, but he did manage to steal um, a Ford Transit. He managed to steal one of those, drive a little bit further away from the prison, he managed to steal a 22 scoped rifle. The guy was playing Call of Duty Warzone in real life. And honestly, if he found one or two more loot boxes, I think he might have had a shot to win the lobby. This guy, I think, I think if you could, I don't know. I don't know if he's playing solos or not, but someone needs to buy him back because, like I said, I'm kind of impressed by him. He did a really good job. He provided the world with some different content for once, right? It wasn't politics. It wasn't about Elon Musk. It wasn't, uh, you know, a snooze fest. We had a murderer on the loose. The la- When was the last time that happened? Like the 60s? All right. When was the last time we had a good killer on the loose story? It's been a little bit. It's been a little bit. But Danello, if you're listening, I don't think you are. They got you in maximum security now. But honestly, tip your cap to Danilo. Danilo. Um, he, gave us, he gave us a good scare there for two weeks, and we're not even in the month of October yet. So a little appetizer there for the month of October. Now, if you lived right in the area where he was, I'm sure it would have been a little bit scary. Whenever I was writing... <laughs> you know, my thoughts up for this episode, what I wanted to talk about, he was still on the loose. And I was thinking like, you know, this guy's a convicted killer. If I talk about him on the episode and make a joke about his height or his name or what he looks like, you know, I live, live about an hour and a half, two hours where he uh, was caught. What if he tuned in and he goes, you know what? I don't like the way this guy's talking about me. I got my next target. Um, If you look my name up, you can see where I go to college. And, you know, if you use your context clues, you look around the building a little bit here. If you wanted to, you could probably find me. Now, my door does lock, but my door is also made of plastic. Um, I had neighbors last year and I was in their apartment one time and um, their doors were just smashed. So it is very possible to smash through these doors. He could have gone full Michael Myers on me and just put his fist through the door, unlocked it from the inside, and just come in and 
He had his next victim. Now, the guy, when he was caught, was wearing a Philadelphia Eagles t-shirt. Even more reason to root for him. Um, And when he was caught, all of the uh, cops and special units, whatever it was that arrested him, they all took a picture of him. And I, you know, I am counting down the minutes for that to be on a rap album cover. Um, You slap the parental advisory in the bottom right corner and the rest is history. Um, Free content there. But Danello, thank you so much just for giving us a new story, right? It was not political. It wasn't, it was original. It was original. Um, You know, it's too bad he couldn't have strung together a few more kills. We could have had an even better story. Uh, We could have had like a a new Jeffrey Dahmer or Zodiac Killer type thing, except obviously we know who he is. But yeah, nonetheless, a fun story, a fun little, fun little anecdote for this year. Luckily, no one actually got hurt by him when I say he should have strung together a few more. Obviously, I'm joking. Obviously, I'm joking. But um, apparently, he's five feet tall, like five feet on the dot. He is from Brazil. Um, they are a little bit vertically challenged down there, more so than uh, their higher latitude counterparts up here in the States. Um, so, and I heard he, he, I guess he killed his ex-girlfriend is the story. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what he did. And I think probably, you know, they broke up and maybe she posted on her story, like, beware of short kings. They, it's not going to end well in the end. And he probably just went after her. Um, so Danilo Cavalcante, is he the first short king to ever uh, commit murder? I'm trying to think of like all the all the big name murderers from the past. They've always been pretty tall. Right. One second here. Jeffrey Dahmer. Height. Jeffrey Dahmer was six foot. Um, who else is there? Who else killed people? Um, Stephen Paddock Height. Um, no height listed for Stephen Paddock. But yeah, I I can't think of any big name killers that were ever short. Um, So Danilo, you were breaking barriers, knocking down boundaries left and right. And I think they probably arrested him because they were jealous. I don't know if they arrested him for the murder or not. But yeah, I mean, 14 days on the run. 14 days on the run. In the United States with every state cop and SWAT team and special unit in the state after you. That's impressive. That is crazy. That's really good. Um, And he was arrested. He was cuffed in a Philadelphia Eagles tee. Honestly, his fit kind of, his fit was kind of nice, dude. Like when he got arrested, I don't know where he stole the clothes from. Obviously, I don't think that's what they wear in prison, but he was kind of dripping when they when they arrested him. Kind of dripping. Um, in other news, um, Aaron Rodgers suffered a torn Achilles, a complete tear of his Achilles. Not even two minutes into his debut with the Jets. Now, Aaron Rodgers in the past few years has become very polarizing in the football community, not only the football community, but just the world community with his political comments, things like that. Personally, I will always have a soft spot for Aaron Rodgers. Um, The first year I really started watching football was the year that he won the Super Bowl. Um, Super Bowl 45 played in Cowboy Stadium in 2011. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Um, so, you know, one of my first football memories 
was watching Aaron Rodgers hoist the Lombardi against the Steelers. And I live smack dab in the middle of Pennsylvania, and I'm an Eagles fan. And I grew up having um majority of people around me be Steeler fans. And every time you talk football with a Steelers fan when you're a kid growing up, they go, How many rings does your team have? My team has six. How many do you have? And then you go, yeah, we have zero. Now they have one, but back then they had zero. So growing up, I always had just a bit of a grudge against Steelers fans. And so watching Aaron Rodgers absolutely slice and dice their defense and watching Troy Polamalu and Ben Roethlisberger walk in sadness off the field as the Packers um, raise their fourth trophy will always be one of my fondest football memories. In fact, I was always an Eagles fan. They're the local team. You have to support your local team. and That's just kind of my sports philosophy. But um, I did end up somehow with a Brett Favre jersey. Um, I ended up actually with a Brett Favre jersey, an Adrian Peterson jersey, and... I think I had a I had a Browns jersey at one point, but I was always an Eagles fan, but then I had like I wasn't a Packers fan, I wasn't a Vikings fan, I wasn't a Browns fan, but I always just liked their jerseys, so I had some of those. Probably got them at yard sales, I think. They were all shredded up, but um but yeah, it was really sad to see Aaron Rodgers go down. I look, I have always viewed Aaron Rodgers as sort of a sad guy. Right, He has a terrible relationship with his family. He's never been married. He has no kids. It seems like the only thing he's really got in life is football. Now you can make fun of him for it, or you can look at, it, look at him and go, man, that's kind of tough. He's got millions in the bank, but I've always just got this sense that he's got some, some, some issues in his life. Um, I don't know, I could be wrong, but that's just always what I've sensed. It seems like football is his thing. You know, recently doing drugs and going on podcasts has also been his thing. But he kind of just seems like a lonely guy. And I kind of feel for him. So whenever he comes out and he's ready to take charge with a new team and lead them and um, he's got some of his old, his old buddies like Randall Cobb and... Uh, those guys around him and he's ready to just jump back in and do what he loves again and then you see him go down it's sad and um shoot what's the name of the uh i can't remember his name now yeah garrett wilson um had a great um preseason with garrett wilson and then you see him go down um on the fourth play of the game and then he just sits down and he shakes his head and you know that it's it's done it's over a guy like Aaron Rodgers has been pumped full of painkillers so many times you know when he shakes his head and sits down on the field it's something for real right if it wasn't he'd pop back up go in the blue tent they'd give him methamphetamine and he'd be back on the field looking loopy eyed throwing touchdown passes I remember I can't remember what year it was but there was a game where he got hurt and they took him back and then he came back out and went in the game. And then after the game, they won and he's being interviewed and the the uh, the interviewer's like, Aaron, what happened? I mean, um, they took you back. And then he goes, it was my knee. He's obviously, he's just pumped full to the brim of some kind of superhero drug. Um, you know, he's an old school player. He still wears the bucket helmets that they were wearing like in the year 2000. He doesn't want the new technology that will protect his uh, brain. Has never worn a mouth guard. I don't think he wears a glove on his left hand. Just very old school. Sort of like a cowboy. Doesn't care. He'll stand in there and take the shots and pop back up and do the discount double check belt. And flip off the fans if they're booing him. Right? He doesn't care. And that's something I've always liked about him, always admired him. He is very old school. He's very old school in nature, but very new school in how he plays the quarterback position. I think he's the most talented QB 
that we've probably ever seen. Mahomes is very quickly climbing that ladder. But as for right now, Tom Brady's obviously the GOAT. Um, seven Super Bowls. Uh, the word great means great, and seven Super Bowls is great. But most talented QB, I would give to Rodgers. But anyway, really sad to see him go down. And then Garrett Wilson goes back in the locker room after the game and talks to him. And Aaron Rodgers goes, sorry, kid. Straight out of a corny 90s movie. Straight out of a corny 90s movie. Um, really sad. Really sad. But the good thing about Aaron Rodgers is, like I said, he does have stuff, other stuff going for him. Like drugs and podcasts, okay? So he's going to get through this. He is guaranteed a lot of money still. And honestly, he's a guy who I sort of envisioned him either ending his career with the Packers or retiring. It really did kind of surprise me when he signed with the Jets. Or did he sign or did he get traded? I don't know how he ended up there. I don't remember. But I always envisioned him either retiring a Packer or um, just retire, you know, just stepping out. But um, yeah, he'll figure it out. Hopefully he'll be back. He does have another year after this year on his contract, I believe. So we'll see. But nonetheless, sad to see one of the game's best quarterbacks go down like that. Um, In other news, there was a, I guess, a hearing, a press conference, something like that in Mexico this week, where these presenters, UFOologists, UFOlogists, how do you say that? They brought out apparent um, non-human corpses of extraterrestrial life and showed them to Mexican government officials. Apparently, these corpses were found in Peru in 2017. And look up a picture of them. I'm too lazy to put a picture on the screen. You have to do a little bit of your own research when you listen to alternative jargon. But these dudes are like two feet tall, basically the size of like a human infant. Very, very skinny. They kind of look like E.T., skin color and everything. They're like a very light baby poop brown. And they have large heads, super skinny bodies, um, really big eye sockets. They look right out of a Hollywood movie. Right out of a Hollywood movie. Um, And they showed them, and like everything else, I saw it on, no, I saw it on Twitter first, actually. It was not TikTok this time. I saw it on Twitter, and it it was, like, trending a little bit, but not that much. So we, in the year 2023, we literally bring out corpses of extraterrestrial alien life, and it is number two trending on Twitter behind, uh, like, I don't know, Biden or something. Something stupid. Something dumb. Um, everyone says that they look like they're made out of paper mache. They do, actually. They actually do. Now, I don't know the full story on this. I just saw the video and I knew I had to talk about it. We all know I don't do research for this show. I have other stuff to do, guys. I have other things outside this that I have to do. Like, take care of my rash. Okay? I'm not trying to be brash, but I'm just saying. But anyway, uh, they found these things in Peru. And yes, they do look like they're made of paper mache. Now, all of the replies to this tweet said, Oh, what a coincidence that they're built just like humans, just smaller... What a coincidence, they look like they're right out of Hollywood. And then somebody replied to that tweet and said, maybe the reason that they're built like humans is because this is the best build possible. And that sort of got me thinking a little bit. It always always makes me ponder 
like the way that Hollywood depicts aliens, they're always kind of built like humans for the most part. Besides that one movie, I believe it's Arrival, where the aliens are like these big squids that squirt uh, um, ink into circles that people have to decipher. I think that's the movie, but they're always sort of loosely based around what humans look like. And that makes me think, okay, if these things came from another planet and they had an advanced enough civilization to sort of conquer their planet, uh, invent technology good enough to travel light years away to us, what would they look like? And it, see, that's tough because we don't know what's out there. We don't know what other elements are out there to build spaceships, to fuel spaceships. We, there could be complete untapped things out there that are just a thousand times better than what we have. And the question is, would beings who are able to survive in that environment resemble us? Because right now, we, we definitely don't have the technology to travel light years away and visit other potential living things. We, we just don't have that right now. Maybe the government does and it's just not public yet. Who knows? But I think it's kind of safe to say we don't have any like interstellar movie technology yet where we can go way, way out there with humans on board and expect to ever come back to our place. So the question is, like, if aliens did come here, would they look like us? Because would people, if they resemble us in any way, that means they lived on a similar planet to us and environment to us. And is an environment that's similar to us ever going to have the technology to do that? Or is it going to be more like aliens from the movie Alien where they're like these slimy, gross, bug, reptile things, you know? Who knows? But anyway, they have potent- they have alien corpses potentially, allegedly. And, you know, until something comes out to disprove it, Let's just believe it for fun. Let's believe it, right? We all know that the news lies, everyone lies, but just for fun, can we just believe it? Maybe it'll bring us together. Maybe it'll bring us together. I also, they, did they find a picture of their spacecraft? Let's see here. My uh, my typing teacher from fourth grade would not be proud. Okay, I don't think they got a picture of their craft. I don't know exactly where they or what they found them with. I don't know if they were just laying there or what, but... They definitely don't look like a human that we've ever seen before. They don't look like they're remains of, you know, uh, a prior step in human evolution. They look like a whole different thing. They look like a whole different thing. Their head is, like, elongated, and the face looks just like E.T. I'm sorry. Did Spielberg know something that we didn't? Wasn't that a Spielberg movie? I'm fact-checking my myself. Yeah, it was a Spielberg movie. Um, but yeah, so I don't know why that's not a top story. I don't know why the world isn't freaking out. You know, in all of the alien movies that have ever been made, we find an alien and it's, the world goes nuts. And today we find an alien and everyone's like, so does this mean we get another stimulus check? Like, what's the deal? And honestly, I can't blame them. We, uh, I think everyone's a little bit very much desensitized to any breaking news that ever comes out anymore. And why wouldn't we be? We've lived through a lot the past few years. So I'm not kidding you either. Whenever I was scrolling through Twitter the other day and I stumbled upon this alien video, 
I legitimately, at first I thought it was a movie scene because it looked just like how they would um, like announce the aliens in one of the movies. They had these things sitting in boxes, wooden boxes, and then they were all speaking Spanish. I don't know what they were exactly saying, but... You know, the one guy goes like, como estas, or whatever. Como estoy bien. And then they take they take covers off the boxes. These guys, like, very dramatic fashion. Like they're uncovering a prize from a game show. Also, rest in peace, Bob Barker, speaking of game shows. but And then after they take off, I'm like leaning in. I'm leaning into my screen. I'm like, oh my gosh, here come, the cover's coming, the cover's coming off. They take the covers off. Then there's another box underneath. It was like they set it up like it was a grand reveal, which I guess it is, but it was just so overly dramatic. So they take the covers off, and I'm like I'm two inches from my screen. Then I go, oh, my gosh, there's another layer. So then they take the lids off those boxes, and then I'm like squinting like the videos in like 360p, Still can't really see them. And then they do a close-up. And I see these little dudes. And I go, no way. No way. It did look just like it was from a movie, though. Like the fake news broadcasts that they have in movies. I And I felt like I was one of the actors in the movies. Because there I am. I'm like, you know, sitting on the toilet scrolling through Twitter. And then I like look at my screen all wide-eyed. And I'm an inch from my screen trying to see these aliens. It did feel like maybe movies really do know what they're talking about. Maybe movies are not exaggerating because I felt like I was in one in that moment. But yeah, so first it was like, oh, the the CIA has confirmed we did see a UFO before. That was like a year or two ago. And now it's like, yeah, we have bodies of aliens, but who really cares? Election season's coming up. Who cares about extraterrestrials? Let's run a thousand Biden versus Trump ads next month. So crazy to see. Crazy to see. I thought I was in a movie, man. But too bad these guys are dead. If they were alive, they would definitely, you know, what would happen if these guys were alive? I think they'd probably be taken by the government and hidden away in a lab, which I would, I would understand on one hand. We have to figure out who and what we're dealing with. Are they hostile? Are they nice? But also, before we take them to the lab, can we, like, dap them up? Can we, like, take them to Mickey D's and see what they order? And that would honestly say a lot about their society, their culture. Do they go with the Big Mac? Did they go with the 20 piece? I don't know. Just looking at this guy, I feel like, I mean, he is a little guy. He's like two feet tall. So I would start with a happy meal, probably with the apple slices instead of the extra fries. Just looking at his face, Um, get some fiber in him, I guess. And then depending on what the toy is, if they still do toys and Happy Meals, let them play with it, see how it goes, and just let these dudes hang out. Let them hang out. Get them a beer. Get them a beer. Before you, like, if you're going to take them to the lab and run tests and strap them to a table and take some DNA from them or whatever, just buy them dinner first. Get them a beer. Get them a cold one. So... Anyway, speaking of McDonald's, McDonald's, now this is more breaking news to me than the aliens, a little bit, a little bit, but McDonald's is removing their self-serve soda machines by the year 2032. Brace for impact, guys, brace for impact. We only have nine years left of self-serve soda machines and McDonald's. Brace yourselves. Hold on to your hats. I know it's tough news. I know, I know, I know. Don't cry. Stop. Stop. Don't cry. But since COVID, 
Um, ironically, I always say on, on this show, yeah, I don't do research for any of these topics. But the McDonald's self-serve soda machines being gone by 2032, I read the whole article. I have all the facts right here. Since COVID, 40% of McDonald's business comes from either, either their mobile or drive through orders, either on their app or through the drive through or through DoorDash, Uber Eats, whatever. 40% since COVID. That's a lot. That's a lot. That sounds like a lot, but then that makes you realize that 60% of people who buy McDonald's still go inside to order. And then it's like, okay, that's still a lot. That's still a lot. But um, apparently they're going to reduce the size of their dining rooms since they don't get as much use anymore in a lot of their locations. Take out some seating. I mean, to be fair, it's been a while since I've sat down and eaten at a McDonald's. To be fair. Now, and they also plan on developing some locations that have no dining room at all. So like basically a little step, basically like a Sonic, I guess. Like, I don't think you can eat inside at Sonic. It's just a drive through and a parking lot and a bunch of roller skates. Um, but that, it, it does make me sad. Now, <sighs> McDonald's has really gone through many um, de-evolutions, devolutions, however you say that word. First, we lost the colorful, fun, playful McDonald's with the red roof, the yellow support beams, the giant golden arches that were so unapologetic. When you went to a McDonald's, you just felt like you were about to ingest America. You felt like you were just at home in a friendly place. You went to McDonald's and it felt like you were getting a hug from Ronald himself. It felt like Ronald could really live in this place. They had play places with slides and ball pits and all of this great stuff. Now we lost that. Now we have dark corporate McDonald's. You go to McDonald's and the walls are black. The outside is brick. Their logo is in size 12 font at the top of the building. You, don't, you wouldn't even know if you were at McDonald's or a doctor's office until you walk in and you hear that beeping coming from the kitchen. You walk to McDonald's, you're not sure if you're about to get a Big Mac or a flu shot. You walk in McDonald's, and you're not sure if you're about to be handcuffed or if you're about to get a large Diet Coke. What happened? What happened, man? Why why is McDonald's going with like corporate gothic architecture? It's a fast food joint. It's a fast food joint. Um look, I have so many memories of eating McDonald's with my grandparents. Um, sitting in those spinny chairs, getting 20 refills of Coca-Cola, not even diet. I was a kid. Now, I admit, I never really did play in the play place. My parents were afraid uh, that I would, like, find a diaper in the ball pit. And, you know, they were just being good parents. However, my immune system would have been way more off the charts if, if I was allowed to play in the McDonald's ball pit. If I was allowed to play in the McDonald's ball pit at the age of four, I don't think I would have ever gotten sick again. I would have already had all the germs. So, but look, them removing the self-serve soda machines, it's not like a huge deal, but it's just one of the things that made McDonald's McDonald's. How many places can you go to these days and get unlimited free refills for as long as you're there? Not that many, I don't think. Not that many, at least not where you can just get up and go pick, right? Maybe at our diner, your waitress comes by and says, hey, can I top you off with another Diet Coke? And you go, yeah, sure. But at this place, you just get out of your chair and you walk up there, proud as can be, and you can go down the line and get a shot of each drink. Tell me where else you can do that for free. 
You pay $1.29 for any size soft drink. Yes, I have that memorized. And you can just go down the line. Nine years, people. You have nine years. Soak it in. Soak it in. Go anytime you can. And just soak it in, okay? The last thing I want to talk about also deals with soft drinks. They're on my mind a lot. I'm drinking a, an energy drink right now. It's my afternoon cigarette while I, uh, while I do the show. But Coca-Cola Creations, which is a branch of Coca-Cola, if you didn't know, that over the last few years they release like a new weird flavor of Coke like every, I don't know, maybe twice a year. But they are releasing a new quote-unquote Y3000 flavor. Now, apparently, well, okay, I'll fill you in. So they had, uh, they've had so far, they've had Coca-Cola creations that taste like marshmallow, that taste like banana, that are supposed to taste like space. So um, I've tried all of them. Not great. Not that great. Uh, but this one's supposed to taste like the future. Yeah. And they asked AI what flavors people associate or think the future will taste like. Yeah, they asked artificial intelligence, hey, what, uh, what flavors do humans think that the future will taste like? They could have asked humans. This is dumb. That's the end of the episode. Goodbye. Thanks for listening, watching. We'll see you next week.